All right, thank you, everybody. Kia ora. Hopefully, you can all hear me in the back. All right, hello, I'm Sean. Uh, I lead a team of, te technical, uh, of talented uh, technical account managers. So we're, we're salad there. Um, yeah, and then in reality, that means I work with a bunch of uh, problems and solve problems that uh, people don't happen to see on a daily basis. Um, so come find me if you've got a strange and wonderful problem that you need solving. Um, and from the opening this morning, I've got two kids and uh, zero grandkids. I think that's all I'm happy. So. <laughs> so for everyone that attended Drupal South 2022 in Brisbane, this is going to be the V2 of that present. So we're looking for how popular is Drupal and also the open web, all the associated open source CMSs, um, but specifically looking at the Australian government ecosystem, which is quite the journey. Um, and yeah, just like last time, there are a bunch of uh, sort of proprietary ways to kind of achieve this. Um, I just don't really like relying on other people to tell you stuff, and I like to see under the hood what's actually going on. So just like last time, we plugged in our Wappalizer and Puppeteer. So like a normal human being, I went to go update my repositories. And I was like, huh, Wappalizer is not the page. Yeah, so in August 2023, um, the repo owner just yanked it from the internet. However, um, the internet being the internet, um, you can't really stop it. The internet just happened. And I think this is uh, possibly for this. If you haven't seen it, maybe. And then for the list of government domains, so these, the main challenge is, is actually working out how important a government domain is. And I've changed my reference sites because I found a new top contender for best government. <laughs> <laughs> So Bogan, oh, oh, it's so good. Thank you for existing. So we downloaded this from DomCop, top 10 million websites. We ran it through Grip, and we came up with six and a half odd thousand government with the page rank. And for those that are Gen Z, you won't know what this is, but back in the day, this was really important to know how popular your website was on the internet because. You know, Google was 10, and you weren't. It's logarithmic. So just like the Richter scale, the next number up is actually five times, well, in this case, five times rather than. And uh, MOGS, still a thing. Website still opening and closing. Yeah, anyway, graphs. That's what you guys are here for. Um, so, again, disclaimer, it is based on October 2023, 2023 data, which is recent. I did this, it was maybe a couple of weeks ago. This is conference-driven development. It's not perfect. Um, newly created websites unlikely have a good page rank just due to the nature on how a page rank works. All right, crack into it. State of Victoria, vic.gov.au. And I chose these guys because they were first last time, but 32.2% um, of the websites when I reversed page rank score is based on the aggregation, not by count of. Uh, we're still at a percentage of unknown basically 20 odd percent, um, but the ones you see hot on its heels. See the next open CMS there in WordPress. Anyway, there's a lot of weird and wonderful things, and I went to a lot of trouble this year to try and detect more of that unknown, just to try and reduce what we do. New South Wales, again, a uh, component Drupal, again, quite high. Um, and for some reason, in New South Wales, there's a lot of schools. Adobe, 
thought they were strapped for cash. <laughs> anyway. And now we get to see a bit more of the like more interesting trends. So in some of these states, we're actually seeing like the is actually dominated by school. And uh, also other things, craft. It's actually really cool. It's like I'd call it semi-open. Um, you can download the source. Um, and uh, yeah, the HCL digital experience, that's actually the old, um, used to be called IBM. You have to rename it in a few years. That's the <laughs> new name. WA. Bunch of Drupal. Um, and then another kind of interesting thing is this um, Spark CMS, which is these things that sort of just get footholds in these sort of uh, states are quite prevalent. Um, so that's a proprietary. proprietary. Tasmania. Interesting, to say the least. Squiz, a lot of squiz, a lot of WordPress. SharePoint. Queensland. Up there. You don't do daylight savings and you don't do a lot of Drupal either. And uh, you see here Jardu. So Jardu is another one of these sort of state oriented. If you deal with Jardu, come talk to me. I want to know more about what it is. ACT, you guys love school. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what the squaff tells me. Northern Territory, you guys also love squares. And this is where it gets really interesting. At the federal level, so this is a graph excluding all the state-based domains and all the territory-based And it's, yeah, either you're doing Drupal or you're just custom coding them. Pretty much. That's what that happens at the level. Yeah, there's a huge percentage of unknown. And this unknown could just mean that they're just using a custom front-end, like it's just built in, like, say, Next.js or something. And punching it all into the super graph, weighting all government sites, um, you actually see Drupal actually ends up on top. And then I was like, oh, how is it actually the case? You guys just saw a whole bunch of pie graphs there. Squiz the top. And it's just because not all government sites are the, the same, really. And I'll get to a graph soon as to why that's. Um, here's the top 10 sites by score, health.gov. Uh, running Drupal, and here you can see how I've reversed page rank to a score. So I've just been at power of five, I've come up with a decimal number. So more accurate. You see Trove, and you can see unknown, like I don't know what Trove is written in. If someone does know, please let me know. And uh, the ATO is an interesting one. They're actually a decoupled site core site. Bomb, we'll talk about. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, like, and these are kind of what you. And um, it's actually a lot of these sort of big sites, and you can see they're all federal. Observation Drupal powers roughly 29.9% of the digital experience used. And comparing this back to 2022, it's actually percentage wise increased 2.7%. So that means, yeah, go you go. It's probably something to do with. Relative to the growth of Australian government sites, in that top 10 million, Drupal adoption is growing fast. So that's also important. Squiz, still the lead contender. Um, this year coming in at 15.6 cent, and actually like an increase in the number of states and territories from four to five. So actually coming, seems like more mandate. 
Drupal by version, uh, yep, kind of probably what you expect. And I'm not doing any fancy sniffs here. This isn't like MD5 hashing all your files in your Drupal site. This is really checking a few other places are freely available in. Please don't hide it, by the way, you know. Tell the world what you're running. Um, didn't find any D6. Um, great, I think. D8 is small. Great, I think. Um, D9, still not as small as I think it would be. Here we are. And Drupal 7, I thought this might be useful because, uh, yeah, it was actually quite a bit in 2022, it was 15.8%, and now it's 5.4%. It's actually dropped by 65 So, I mean, well done to everyone that's gone through those upgrades. Thank you for your service. Um, I dug out the most popular D7 site, and it's uh, statelibrary.net. Anyway, no doubt there Open source versus proprietary. Uh, and by open source here, I mean that the source code is available. I can download it. I can run it locally. And there's a license that allows me to do that. Um, so I count things like Craft CMS as open source for the purposes of this, even though feature. Squares, well, you just, you, can you download the source code? So, Squiz is, uh, yeah, it's on the left. The naughty side. <laughs> yeah, and this is actually, I thought, kind of interesting just to tell the story about as well, but this is the score attributed by type of so federal government, any state. You can almost see how important each state is. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I won't tell you that. Yeah. TLS coverage. We don't have it. Yeah, we've actually improved though. 46 sites have been taken off the naughty list. We're now left with 83 sites. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of weird and wonderful sites in this list, I tell you that much. Uh, there's uh, HCL Notes, which is, um, I think that was Lotus Notes back in the day. If anyone's seen a .nsf in their URL, you, know. you don't need TLS for that, right, surely. <laughs> so, bomb. Yeah, it um, turns out Firefox has got a feature that will stop you from visiting sites that aren't HTTPS. And people will raise Reddit posts saying, is Firefox broken? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> Firefox, you're not broken. <laughs> you're just assuming things. Um, yeah, so... Well, I... Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit spicy though. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... Anyway, there's some settings you can change, and if you click on a Google link, anyway, it's just it's pain and suffering. Um, so this is Reddit. You know, these are just a bunch of angry nerds, right? <laughs> so I thought, what about the clever nerds? <laughs> and, yeah. And, like, if you're looking for a reason why, I think this is just the best thing I've found in Hacker News in quite some time. But um, weather man in the middle, and then, oh, Eisenhower. So... Oh, good times. And then I thought, oh, what about the rest of the internet? Twitter. Whatever. Um, anyway, you don't need it very hard to find uh, anything there. So <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to spend my Friday in the code sprint building this if you think it would be worthwhile. Um, it's pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought... I could probably make that serverless. Yeah, anyway. Um, if in doubt, add a number, and people are still adding these guys. So dub, 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 um, yeah, dot one, dot nine. 
the state library has got version 2, you can tell, because there's two. This is Medicare, but a different version. And I thought, why would people be adding these numbers, right? And then, ah, it's actually a version of, um, it's, it's a form of version control. <laughs> I'm just late to the party. This is what health used to look like. This is what police used to look like. It's a simpler time back then. They want you to help solve crime. Oh, Lord. Okay, who can tell me where this points to without looking it up on your phone? Yes, Elbo! He stole the new most prevalent popular domain. This is an outrage. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> I've got things to say, let's just say. It was confusing. I was like, it says it's secure. Why would it lie? <laughs> Who can spot the difference or spot what's wrong with this image? Hey, someone's got the Stack Overflow keyboard. They forgot to edit things. <laughs> the site. I don't think it has a database. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, how? I know, right? What happened to version 8? <laughs> Sorry, Melvin. You're all getting cold. <laughs> yep. That was a pretty cool domain name. I'll give it that. And then they've done that with it. Okay. And then I found a couple of these. It's like, man, this is like Internet of old, you know? Like, <laughs> I wish we had more pages where people's website was. It's a bit late, this one, because it's about COVID. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. Um, powered by force.com. And this just brought back memories. So I thought, Whoa. not only do you have under construction, but you've got, you've got Internet Explorer <laughs> under construction. Ah, oh, so good. And uh, I made up this category. It's the smallest website. It's only 500 pixels big. <laughs> it's a whole website. You guys are all wasting space. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, yep. Sorry, Gen Z. No house. They're all, they're all too, too expensive. Isn't that just, just tragic? Hello, Apache. This was a government domain, and now a redirect to c.museum. I thought, that is, that's great. God bless. Love that one. Certain <laughs> amount of irony in that one. Who remembers building websites with frames? Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. This has got a background image. It's a GIF. <laughs> all right. So for all you guys in the audience and girls who go, you know what? I want to come up with some spicy graphics, some spicy data. You don't need me to present it to you. You can actually, now that you know how to use QR codes, you can scan a QR code, and this will take you to a guest on uh, GitHub where you can see the CSV. So the CSV is literally the database of all this data. Out. So if you've got any crazy questions like, can you show me what sites are using Spark, CMS, and WA, you can find out. If you want to find out the other sites on that list that don't support HTTPS, you know, go find out. And um, the slides are here as well, so if you need to take some uh, higher res screenshots of the pie graphs, you know, way too quick. 
that's okay. No QR code for that because honestly, you can bitly um, just remember it. DSAU2024. And like a good open source citizen, uh, I did upstream enhancements into Web App Analyzer, which is a new <coughs> library in its place. Um, so we've got better sniffs now for Silverstripe, and then brand new sniffs for a whole bunch of other weird and wonderful things that came across Datascape. Uh, Spark, Jadu, Engagement, Social Pinpoint, and Citizens, which are all like various uh, engagement platforms for lack of. And. <laughs> happy to take questions if they're uh, suitable for the audience, or happy to do questions afterwards, Sai. Oh. Sorry. Oh. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. So by the looks, you are the Where it's possible to infer it, I try to infer. So there are certain, sometimes the images are loaded from the content platform, and image folder structure implies the CMS. Um, is it perfect? No, but can I see a site core site from looking at it? Yeah. So yeah, like the ATO is a good example. Go visit the ATO's website, and um, the HTML source will look like every other JavaScript app on the internet. Quite messy uh, from a source perspective. You can normally see it the way. Uh, so the question was whether I can sniff the API calls that are happening, and uh, I don't know if I do sniff the API calls. But if you can think of, if you think that might help, um, I'm open. Like if you can help reduce the unknown number, then yeah, I'm always keen to make the stats better over time. So, so, um, will you like? To So this was n <laughs> none of this was done through crawling. This was all in that top 10 million data list. So at some point, these sites existed and were classified as authoritative to some degree. So I think that's kind of the big problem for the site owners here is that people are referencing these old sites, and they still are in maybe <laughs> printed material um, or you know brochures or stuff. So that's kind of the big problem here. We hold on to those domains and just redirect them to their new homepage. Um, you know, even if it's just the, you know, maybe the main landing page of this that that, that their content. Uh, I did see a couple of sites point to Trove, um, like which I thought was kind of interesting, but. Yeah, so the domain would just redirect back to like a snapshot from Trove. And yeah, it wasn't too common. Um, more often than not, they just leave them running. Running on. Right. Right, yeah, that was a comment, just like the most of the ACT sites. Uh, yeah, most of the people in ACT work on the federal side, so. But you do have ACT sites too. Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> cool. Oh, Adam? <laughs> I mean. I just roll with the data, Adam. Like I don't, I don't try, <laughs> I don't try to predict what you guys will be doing. Um, I don't know. Like I, I am seeing um, a lot of these uh, federal sites gain uh, in popularity. I'm seeing more data being housed at that sort of level. Um, the sites at the state level, yeah, often referring to content on at the federal level. So I, I'm guessing uh, if I was to predict any. 
you the federal slice of the pie would make increase in the next two years. Um, but uh, I also maybe another prediction would be more of these state-based mandated um, platforms would increase. Um, it seems to be a trend that's continuing. So yeah, I don't really have opinions on that. I just yeah, I, mean, I kind of do, but not here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I did it uh, in the Dribble South Wellington. So if we do do it South New Zealand, do the same thing again. Comparing as well is, is quite nice. But there's always fun things, right? Like I didn't have to go looking for this stuff, really. It was all there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You can take a photo if you want. Thank you.